Friends, today we are going to discuss partial theories of growth with special reference to vicious circle of poverty and circular causation. We will start with vicious circle of poverty first. You might have heard a statement that a country is poor because it is poor. It actually means poverty is the cause and poverty is the result. The simplification done is in case of an individual also. As in case of an individual, we say that a man is poor because he is poor. Same applies to underdeveloped countries. Now let us see how a man remains poor when he is poor. It is very simple to understand that a poor man will have physical capabilities less as well as mental capabilities less. So if you have poor health and poor skill, your productivity will be less and payments made to you will be less because payments are always linked to productivity. And if payments made are less, you have lesser income and thus you remain poor. So the circle is complete. Poverty breeds poverty. Similarly, when it comes to a case of a developing country, this theory has been propagated by Ragnar Nakse, which says that in case of developing countries, poverty leads to such forces. So the theory starts by saying, as per Ragnar Nakse, that the cycle of poverty is the set of factors or events by which poverty once started is likely to continue. He says, vicious circle of poverty is constellation of forces which act and react with one another in such a way that a country is trapped in abject state of poverty. He has given three reasons for vicious circle of poverty to operate. And he has explained this with the help of demand side of the vicious circle of poverty, supply side of the vicious circle of poverty, and vicious circle of market imperfections. So look at the demand side first. The basic cause for underdevelopment is low aggregate demand. Nakse says that poverty leads to low production, low production leads to low income, low income leads to low aggregate demand, that is uh, consumption demand as well as investment demand C plus I and because of this low aggregate demand there is low inducement to invest you must be knowing that inducement to invest is limited by the size of market and if you have low aggregate demand you have lesser inducement to invest and if inducement to invest is limited then there is low investment low production and leading to poverty. So circle becomes complete. This is demand side. Similarly from supply side we say that poverty leads to low income. Low income leads to low savings because you know savings depend upon ability to save and willingness to save. In case of poorer countries ability to save is low because of small per capita incomes and willingness to save is also low because of luxurious consumptions as well as demonstration effect. In fact, if you look at the poorer nations, we have two classes existing in these nations, poorer class and richer class. Poorer class have no ability to save, the richer class have conspicuous consumption, which is result of demonstration effect. So both poorer class and richer class both are able to save less. So you have less availability of investable funds which leads to low rate of capital formation, which leads to low production, low income and poverty. Again, the circle becomes complete. The thirdly, when it comes to market perfections and its causation to vicious circle of poverty, we say that investment does not depend only on savings but also on ability to invest and willingness to invest. In developing countries, entrepreneurship, which we call sumpitarian investors, who can take risks or who are ready to come forward and invest less. It is because of the low profitability, which is result of low aggregate demand and non-availability of funds. So these market imperfections lead to underdevelopment. And this also is a cause of vicious circle of poverty. So we can feel that vicious circle of poverty works in three ways from demand side, from supply side 
and vicious circle poverty of market imperfections. To sum up, if we want to look at the main points of vicious circle of poverty, it starts with poverty leads to low production and low production is followed by rapid growth of population, low per capita incomes, low consumption, limited size of market, low savings, lack of capital, low investment, low production and poverty. So once the vicious circle of poverty sets in, are we going to say that a country if trapped in this vicious circle of poverty cannot come out of this vicious circle of poverty? The economists feel that there are ways and means to break this vicious circle of poverty. Now let us look at how to break vicious circle of poverty. I would like to mention here that if you know how the knot has been tied, it is very easy to untie it. So we have seen that the knot of vicious circle of poverty has been tied from demand side, supply side and because of market imperfections. So if we undo these factors, uh, we would have broken the vicious circle of poverty. Like uh, if you want to increase aggregate demand, that is consumption demand and investment demand, the solution is simple. Government should come forward, make investments in public sector. If private sector is not coming forward, public sector which is not always linked to profitability can be promoted. Government can undertake productive investments and this will undo the circulation of forces because then if aggregate demand is raised it will lead to higher inducement to invest, higher investments, high production and higher per capita income, national income and then higher demand for goods and services both by consumers as well as investors. So vicious circle of poverty has to be broken from demand side by raising level of aggregate demand. Similarly, if we want to break it from supply side, then uh, we'll have to provide additional funds through raising the voluntary savings and voluntary savings can be raised by raising the interest rates or by raising rate of provident fund or expansion of provident fund scheme or say introduction of LIC scheme or giving incentives, tax incentives to the savers. Then we can also think of expansion of banking institutions. Mobilization of savings can be also done in rural areas through the help of cooperative banks and microfinancing. And if voluntary savings are not coming forward, government can also go for forced savings through taxation. Surplus through international trade can be also made use of. We can also make use of surpluses earned by public sector enterprises or deficit budgeting or we can also think of getting funds from external sources where role of foreign capital that is FDI, FIIs can come into picture. We also have to raise human capital to break the vicious circle from market imperfection side because it is not only the level of aggregate demand or level of savings which will determine investment. It is also how people become resources and not liability will also make country to flourish fast. So expenditure on education, health, training, information, sanitation which will lead to higher productivity of labor and also higher productivity of physical capital can also help to break vicious circle of poverty. The other ways to break vicious circle of poverty can be proper use of natural resources, self-reliance policy of the government, encouragement to private sector, increase in savings by rationalizing the expenditures of the people, increase in exports, reduction in imports, development of agriculture, development of industrial sector, especially manufacturing, balanced growth strategy, introduction to new technology, reduction in population growth, administrative reforms, discouraging monopolies and monopolistic trends, denationalization of sick enterprises, improving the quality of labor by providing them skills, political stability, stable economic policies and effective planning. So this is how we can break vicious circle of poverty. Now when it comes to this theory of vicious circle of poverty, there are economists who say that the thesis of vicious circle of poverty is invalid and they have given instances that had this 
thesis been valid, then countries would have been poorer for all times. And they have given examples of Latin America, Southeast Asian nations, West Africa, and many other countries who have achieved rapid and steady growth rates, and they have uplifted themselves from vicious circle of poverty. Because the thesis says that once you are poor, you remain poor. It means whatever efforts you do, you will not be in a position to come out of this trap. This is not true. This is the first objection raised against this thesis. That the thesis itself is invalid because there is no permanent trapping of economies into vicious circle of poverty. Similarly, the other point of view is the demonstration of fact which leads to lower savings and conspicuous consumption is not always true. The economists feel that demonstration effect is not always negative, it can be positive also because when you come into contact with the rest of the world, you learn from one another. You learn from one another as well as you learn with one another. You exchange ideas. The contact promotes new ideas, attitudes and modes of conduct as well as new items of production, new crops and improved methods of production beside encouraging production for sale. So, uh, Vishwa Circle of Poverty has to be taken as a thesis which can be challenged. Now we will come to the other side of the partial theory of growth that is the circular cumulative causation which is propagated by Gunnar Merdal in 1956. The theory of circular cumulative causation propagated by Gunnar Merdal negates the monocausal explanation of the problem of underdeveloped countries by economic factors alone. He says that non-economic factors also play an important role and especially the social relations have to be studied. Merdal's circular cumulative causation theory can be characterized in three main points. One, his CC theory is not a simple logic of polarization process because it includes not only backwash effects but also spread effects. So, uh, Merdal has talked about two effects which operate simultaneously. One is known as backwash effects, the other is known as spread effects. Spread effects help underdeveloped countries to grow faster while backwash effects are hindrances to economic development process. The second point of his theory is supposed to consist of both economic and non-economic factors. So development is a function of economic as well as non-economic factors. And the third point is his CC theory exists at a theoretical foundation of egalitarian policies. Middle says a little bit of sacrifice and hard work on the part of leadership as well as citizenry of a nation will help breaking vicious circle of poverty. Mendel mentioned the availability of natural resources, the historical traditions of production activity, national cohesion, religion and ideologies, economic, social and political leadership as important for development. He concentrated on the social positioning aspects of development. Mendel showed equality as his most value premise and insisted the policies based on equality will induce higher growth. So it is for the nations and the policy makers to introduce egalitarian policies if they want to break vicious circle of poverty. So this is how circular causation of vicious circle of poverty has to be tackled as per Gunnar Middle. Yeah, some economists have said in all labor there is profit but mere talk leads to poverty. So if you really want to end poverty and promote growth and development in developing countries, you have to end poverty by micro enterprises, by providing microfinance to workers through business training and mentoring, empowering people because if you empower people, it creates dignity, ownership and self-sufficiency which leads to higher investment and higher incomes. Higher incomes also lead to investments in children. It creates higher self-esteem which is ultimately an asset for a nation which will help increasing developmental exercise. 